Shalom. Again, I'm Elder Pop Samuel from the tribe of Judah. Um, today, we're going to be going over um, Gentiles. Whether or not Gentiles is welcome in the kingdom um, with the Most High. We're going to go through the scriptures and find out exactly whether or not uh, the Gentiles get the kingdom. This thing has been going on whether or not they're going to get the kingdom or not, or whatever, and this and that. So we're going to go to the, through the Bible to find out exactly what the Bible say. Romans 3 and 4 says, Let God be true and every man's a liar. One of the scriptures I uh, emphasize a lot is Hosea 12 and 10, Job 11 and 6, um, Ezekiel 3 and uh, 17 through 20, and 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and 15. Write those down. Also, Hosea 6 and 6, Jeremiah 17 and 9 through 10. Um, those scriptures I meditate a lot. Um, also, Isaiah 55 and 8 through 9. So, the first scripture that I read was um, Hosea 12 and 10. So, we'll get right on into it. Being a, that I'm an old man, I go straight to the point. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. And it reads, I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes, similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Similitudes of, um, is explaining one thing carnally, but it's another side spiritually. What God is telling you what he wants you to focus on. Carnally and spiritually. Because you have a carnal body, you have a spiritual body that makes a living soul. The next precept is Job chapter 11 and verse 6. Job 11, chapter 11, verse 6, and it reads, And that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that... They are double to that which is. Double, meaning. That's what I was talking about. Carnally, spiritual. Over here, elders of Israel, we teach a lot of spiritual because the spiritual is the understanding that you need to get. I'll read that again. Job chapter 11, verse 6. And that he will show thee the secrets of wisdom. It's a secret of wisdom. That's the spiritual side you need to understand. That they are double that it that which is. Now therefore that God exacts of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Write these precepts down. Because we tend to think carnal all the time. Of course, you have to think carnal because we live in a carnal world. But God wants you to get the spiritual understanding because when you think carnal, you lust. You lust. It pulls you into the world. Um, you can read about that in James chapter 1 verse 12 through 15. It tends to pull you into sin. Write that down. Um, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. And it reads, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So I have to tell you this. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked, his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. Iniquity is sin. But thou hast delivered thy soul again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, which is sin, and I lay a stumbling block all through this Bible, 
a stable blac. Stable blac. The stumbling blocks are in the carnal precepts. Remember that. Again, verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at hand. Um, we're going to jump about. We want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and 5. You have to examine yourself all the time if sin, if sin, if you pull it toward the lustful deceit in this world. So you have to continue to examine yourself. Remember, we just read there are stumbling blocks. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. And it reads, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, meaning the Word of God. Ex except ye be reprobates. That's saying if you're not doing God's spiritual law, you're reprobate. That's what it's saying. So you have to examine yourself to continue to think spiritual. Like I said before, carnal bring you back into sin. So you have to focus on spiritual. Again, I know we live in a carnal world. But you got to feed that spiritual body. Now, we're going to move ahead. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. And it reads, The heart is the simple. The heart is the mind. Which is, you can write this down, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19. The heart. You can also write down Mark Chapter 7 and verse 21. That's the heart also, which is the mind. Again, Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, the mind, and desperately, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart, the mind, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. So as he thinketh, so is he. That's what he's saying. If you think spiritual, you're going to do spiritual acts. If you think carnal, you're going to go into lust and deceit. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. We're going to move on to Isaiah 55, verse 8. And it's not a hard class. It's an easy class. Very easy. And it, it takes time, but you will learn. And I'm speaking to the Gentiles. So if you have a weak stomach, if you don't, if you're not a Gentile, change the channel. Simple as that. I'm speaking directly to the Gentiles. The white people, the uh, Japanese, the Moabites, the Africans, the uh, and so forth. That's who I'm speaking to. Of course, I'm speaking to also black folks, but I'm speaking to the Gentiles. Okay. If you say that you're a Gentile, that's who I'm talking to. Um, so we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So he thinks spiritual. 
God do not have a carnal mind. It's spiritual. So you have to think spiritual. John chapter 3 and verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, carnal. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So it's a spiritual seed. It's a carnal seed. And there's a spiritual seed. The spiritual seed that was sown, what Christ is talking about, is Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. Let's go to it. This is the seed, this is the most important seed. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. That's Luke chapter 8 verse 11. The seed of God. The seed of God. God got a spiritual seed. Not carnal. A spiritual seed. That's a seed that you need to focus on. Why? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, spiritual house, from that spiritual seed, and holy priesthood to offer of spiritual sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Hmm. So we concentrate more over here on the spiritual side. Makes no difference what color you are. And we're going to prove that point. Um, Romans 2 and 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, inwardly, spiritually. And circumcision is that of the heart, the mind. Remember? Circumcision of the heart. We read about circumcision. Right? Romans chapter 2, verse 29. Read that again. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision, the mind, is that of the heart. In the spirit, not carnal, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4. I like to give out these precepts to get us more in the spirit. Because we're not looking at color right now. We're looking at the spirit. Remember, this is the spirit side. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless, endless genealogies. He wants you to do this spiritual law. That's all. He don't care what color you are. Which minister questions. Am I the bow seed of Abraham? Am I the bow seed of Jacob? He don't care. We're going to get into that. Rather than goodly edify, which is in faith, so do. Okay. We're going to break down what is a saint. Because a lot of people think a saint is only from the bow seed of Jacob. And it's not. What is a saint? We're on the spiritual side now. I'm talking to you Gentiles. A lot of you have been called. You don't know who you are. But this is your day. See, you took an oath. You don't remember. But we're going to get it out of the scriptures. Romans 15 and 4. It says, remember. Because it's documented. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Basically says the same thing. So we're going to get it from the Bible to remember. Um, Psalms 15 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Wait a minute. Now, I remember back in Moses' day, they used to do a sacrifice with lambs, sheep, goats, bull, animals, 
animals. But that's not the animal he wants you to sacrifice spiritually. That's carnal. That's why the carnal um, law is done away with. It's spiritual understanding now. Let me show you what makes you spiritually a saint. This is what he wants you to sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. This is what makes you a saint. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. And it reads, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, brother, I'm sorry, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies, your bodies, not the animal, a living sacrifice, holy, except acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, mean to change spiritually, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You have to sacrifice yourself. What makes you a saint? This is the animal you got it to kill spiritually. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Over here we teach spiritual. Spiritual. It makes no color. What difference what color you are? This is the animal that you got to sacrifice. And it reads, I have said in my heart, which is the mind, Matthew 15, 19, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Did y'all see that? That's the animal you got to sacrifice. Did y'all see that? Hmm. It's a lot more. Let's get it from Paul. That's the spiritual, what makes you spiritual. You can kill that animal for us, though. The animal all day long, it ain't doing no good. He wants you to kill the old man in you. Let's get it. Let's go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. And it reads, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. The person that you are getting rid of. The old man and becoming a new man. Read it again. Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Oh. It's about getting rid of the old person in you. That's what makes you a saint. Hmm. Let's see another. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 31. I protest to your rejoicing, which I have in Jesus Christ our Lord. I die daily. Hmm. How can a man die daily? He purging out that old man. He getting with, rid of that. He's sacrificing that old man in him. That old person in him that's wicked. That what makes you a saint. Killing an animal, sacrificing an animal all day long do not change you. That's why God said, get rid of that old law. It's not working. He wants you to change. I speak to you Gentiles. I went to my own and they received me not. So I come to you. Romans 16 and 17. This is what the Bible says. And if they don't believe it, this is what you have to do. Like I said before, we're going to go through history and we're going to prove that you took an oath with God. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. There's a lot of people... They dressed in purple. Right now. They dress, it's a nation dressed in purple say that you're not going to get the king. Or they say you're going to be slaves in the king. The Gentiles are going to be slaves. 
That's hypocrisy. But we're going to move on. So we've proven what is a saint. Hmm. This is going to fit you right here. Go to Psalms chapter 18 and 44. Some of you are going to get it just like that. Go to Psalms chapter 18 and 44. You don't remember, but I'm going to teach you. As soon as they hear of me, which is Christ, the word of God, John chapter 1, verse 1, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me, meaning the word of God. Christ is the word of God. John chapter 1, verse 1. This is what you've been wanting, wanting to hear for a long time. Let's get another one. Let's go to John chapter 5 and verse 3. And then we're going to go back in history. And you're going to learn who you are. Because a lot of y'all is very important to God. You are spiritual Israelites. And these lay a great multitude. Great multitude. Remember that name. Multitude. Because we're about to get into it. John chapter 5 verse 3. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. A blind halt with wither waiting for the moving of the water. You wait on this word of God. The word is John chapter 4 verse 14. And it reads, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up to, into everlasting life. This is what you wanted to hear all your life. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Also write that down. Blind. Let's get a precept for that. Matthew 15 31. Insomuch that the multitude wandered, you Gentiles, when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lamb to walk. You see, you saw all these things, and the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Let's go ahead and get another. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. And I'm going to show you how to read spiritually. And you're going to learn that today. And I want you to write me if you have any problems. Any problems. And whom the God of this world have blinded. The people that's ruling right now, they have blinded you with other doctrines. We're going to get into that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. And whom the God of this world, small g, have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light, which is Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Write that down. Or the glory, glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's you, Gentiles. That's you. So, we went through some things to let you know I am skilled at a lot of things. And I'm speaking to the Gentiles. A lot of y'all don't know. And I'm speaking to the other Gentiles also. Yes. Um, we're going to go back and prove this in Exodus chapter 12 and 38. We're going to prove this, and we're going to go to Exodus 12 and 38. Because we mentioned multitude. Exodus 12 and 37, that's where we will start. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. 
and a mixed multitude, that's when you come in too. Gentiles. Went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even every much cattle. Hmm. Flocks. Flocks. This is a spiritual definition. Let's go, let's see what flocks are. Go to Ezekiel 34 and 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastors are man, and I am your God, says the Lord. That's what, these are men. Men of God. That's where you come in too, also. Uh, the mixed multitude, let's stay on 38. Exodus chapter 12, verse 38. Revelation chapter 79. It's all in the book about you. But you can't see it because no one taught you spiritually. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. And after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongue, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. The robes are doctrines. The doctrine. Your doctrine is pure. We're going to go back to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, the flocks and herds, even very great cattle. I don't have good eyes. Y'all gonna have to excuse me on this. Just bear with me. And they baked 11 cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For there was not leaven, because they were thrust of Egypt. They were rushed out and could not tarry Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Food. That's what it means. No food. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord, you notice that, all the hosts of the Lord capitalized Lord went out from the land of Egypt. The host of the Lord are those spiritual Israelites. I give it to you. Spiritual law people who know how to read the Bible. Spiritual. And that's what you're learning today. For I'm Samuel. Elder Pop Samuel from the tribe of Judah. Exodus chapter 12 verse 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of the children of Israel in their generation. We're going to back that up and go tonight. What night? Because it was dark. It was night. Hmm. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. And God said, let the waters... Waters, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. Write it down. Under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. One place, meaning one doctrine. And let the dry land appear and it was so. Um, go to Isaiah, to back that up, go to Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1 through 7. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Judgment means correction. He shall not cry. I'm not crying. Nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Talking about Christ. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. Till he have set judgment in the earth. 
and the owls shall wait for his law. Thus saith the God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. So if you walk in the spirit, you walking in the light. So when we go back to Exodus chapter 12, verse 42, um, and it is not to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Verse 43, and the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Passover is coming up. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Hmm. The reason why he said stranger, because he don't want you to be a stranger. He wants you to learn God's law. Psalms chapter 18 and verse 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away. See that? Verse 45. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their closed places. You're going to fade away because you're going to convert yourself not being a stranger. So when we go back to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. He don't want you to be strangers. He won't, he won't you talk. We're going to get in that. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Carter, you'll think somebody bought somebody. That's not what he's talking about. Let's read that again. Spiritually, we eat on the spiritual side. Verse 44, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 44. But every man's servant that is bought for money. Let's see what money he's talking about. Acts chapter 20 and verse 38. Let's see what he's talking about. Bought for money. God searches out the hearts of men, which is the mind, the heart. Matthew 15, 19. You see, if you think wicked to have a servant, a personal servant, he's not talking about that. This is what he's talking about. Buying a servant. Uh, Acts chapter 20 and 28. And it reads, Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock. Remember flock. The flocks of my pastors are men. Ezekiel chapter 34. And 31. Over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he have purchased with his own blood. That's killing the old man in you. That's what Christ did. He purchased with his own old man, he killed inside himself. That's what you got to do. You got to be reborn again to kill that spirit in you. And that goes for everyone. I'm speaking to you. Like I said before, I went to my own. They received me not. 